So this is what 10 yards of velvet fabric looks like. This is legit, like so heavy. <laughs> All right, this is only like one yard right here. So it goes for 10 yards. Woo, let's do this. Okay, so the first step is we're going to make a semicircle 40 inches out. So here is the number 40 right there. So literally 40 inches out, it's going to be 40 inches like this and 40 inches like that. We're going to do that two times to make a ball gown. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> oh, another thing I forgot is we have to count out my actual waist measurements. So 7 inches out this way, which is it quartered which be right here. So, let's make sure that that goes on correctly. So, 40, it would originally be there. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm sorry, so it's 43 inches out. We're doing 43 inches out. Alright, so I went around, did my 7 inches this way, and my inchage over this way. So, that is 1 quarter. So, we're going to have to transfer that over to the other side and repeat the same thing again to all this shit over here. It's a smidge off season to be making a Santa suit ball gown in September, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> okay, so when you cut out both of your pieces, it will be massive. Let me see. Uh, I did the math on it, but this, just for reference, this um, tape right here is five feet. So there it is. This is the skirt of it. So from the center to the sides, this is the length right here. And then it's actually going to get a little bit longer because we're going to add trim. The reason it's so long, though, is it's going to puff out with the hoop skirt. So it is completely normal for it to be this big. <laughs> so the circle skirt is done. And let me kick that out. So there's a little hole where you actually put your body in. And whoop, let me grab this. There it is. So when it's completely flattened, let me see if I can do this with one hand. When it is completely flattened, one hand and one foot, how about that? When it is completely, ah, jeez, okay. It is the same circle as before, just that double gore stitched on the side. There's my waist hole stitched on the side. So next we're going to cinch this, which I don't have the elastic for that because I didn't think I'd get this far today. Cinch that and then add the fur trim, which I don't think I have enough fur just yet because, again, I didn't think I'd get this far today. But the last thing we're going to do is we're going to have to make the bodice and the arms. But I need the, I need um, some sort of liner fabric. So I have no idea if I have, well, honestly, it doesn't need to be red. It just doesn't, it just has to be, actually, there we go. Seriously though, thank goodness I have, like, I keep all my scraps because I am, ooh, that's enough. I have enough to make liner out of old scraps. Perfect. Keep, always keep all your fabric, friend though. So the way I'm going to pattern the bodice is I'm going to be super lazy and just reuse my old Princess Peach bodice right here. So this is what I made last year and I, I had to try it on because it still fits. Oh, I love Princess Peach, obviously. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it as flat as possible. I'm going to steal this block right here, these blocks, and then the back block too. But since it fits, we're just going to reuse it because I'm not in the mood to remake it. Although I might bring it out just like half an inch because it's a smidge hard to breathe in. I just have to make shallow breaths. <laughs> Pro tip, instead of using fucking anything that is non-reusable patterning paper, I just use fucking toilet paper, I'm sorry, um, kitchen paper, paper towels, because later I line the birds' cages with it. <laughs> economical. Economical and environmental, friends. Actually, I don't know if it, that's exactly environmental, but it's reused. So this is how I take a pattern from an old piece. So. This has the sleeve and then the shoulder. So here is the neck, shoulder, sleeve, side. That's the princess seam right here. And then I just need to cut 
a little bit farther than this, but that's essentially how I take an old pattern because I pin it right on where my seam was before. And then I'm going to mark this, cut it out, and then there's one half of the front, then I just have the side piece, and then the back piece. Then that's it. Woohoo! Okay, so I transferred it to the lining, and then I transferred the lining to the actual fabric, so we can see what's coming of. Oh, fuck yeah! <laughs> it feels so soft! So that's the front. Um, I still have to do the back, and then sew these together, obviously. But yeah, this is the neck. This is the waist. This is the part that's going to be covered by the skirt right there. Holla fucking you, yeah. Okay, so that is the bodice. Very, very fucking cute. I just need to add the zipper to the back because I'm just holding it right now. But it literally just comes on. It has the sleeves. It has uh, a light collar, which I'm going to deepen just a little bit and then add the bumps to her collar right there. But yeah, all I need to do is hem it. This is the inside of it. Yep. I just need to close the back with a zipper here, and then this will be good. Oh, it's so fucking soft and velvety. Love it. So this is actually my hoop skirt and petticoat, because I haven't shown you guys, like, it. So here's the petticoat. It is six yards of extremely heavy, um, this is almost like mosquito netting, like it's really sharp, heavy, like really durable. Um, it's not flimsy tool, this is like netting. Um, and then this is piping. This is plumbing piping. Um, and it's literally just duct taped. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to adjust it to make sure it's perfect. And then later I'm really going to seal them together. Um, and then in the middle it's just a waistband that hooks together with just regular old hooks. So that's the petticoat. Well, th This is the petticoat and then that's the hoop skirt in there. They're not attached or anything. I'm going to add elastic to my petticoat soon and then we're going to put the trim on the skirt. Woohoo!